Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about some of these extreme flash flooding events continuing as the drought will deepen and a rare triple dip La Nina is coming. Welcome back everyone. Pal Ponder on Weather here with another update. How's it going out there? Hope everyone is having a fabulous week. We're gonna really nerd out on this episode. So let's really dive into the data and let going forward and what to expect. So we're going to be taking a look at all the aspects here. Here's the overall North American setup right now as far as the temperature anomalies over the next week. And you can definitely see this uh, monsoonal flow has been alive and prevalent. It, it started to get active around June the 15th and it's been really active and I still re continue to remain be active for the foreseeable future for the monsoonal flow. We've got all the cooler air stuck up well up into Alaska and into Canada, and that's just waiting for some sort of trigger to pull it further south while the ridge of high pressure is just more or less dominating the midsection of the country. And we do have kind of what they call an easterly wave as the further north this high pressure lifts, it's allowing some of this tropical type moisture to pinwheel further off into the deep south. And that's where we're gonna be seeing some of those cooler temperature anomalies. And then we've got these stalled pestle frontal boundaries as well. That's also causing some of these extreme flash flooding events as of late. And another one actually happened last night. So, so let's really delve into it and take a look at the overall tropics. And here's the big picture. So the, here's the monsoonal flow out here with this, what they call is often referred to as the monsoon trough down here in the pacific it's just been a conveyor belt of relentless um, relentless uh, systems coming one after another and this is actually frank i mean look it's actually spreading much needed precipitation into california of all places while much of the atlantic i mean look at that that's almost this is august 2nd guys this is pretty incredible there ain't nothing like literally hardly even a cloud in the sky out there been an incredible amount of saharan dust as the atlantic is just just crickets out there which is a good thing we've only had actually three named storms everything's been on the pacific side and not really having direct impacts and just maybe basically having indirect impacts uh with some of that uh, monsoonal flow and spreading some of that beneficial rain into parts of uh, california so now let's take a look at the overall monsoon. I apologize that this graph is a little bit hard to see, but this kind of gives you an idea of how active the monsoon has been in the desert Southwest. What we're looking at here is Arizona and there's Phoenix. Here's a chart on the right-hand corner of the screen. Kind of gives you an idea how this shapes up to other monsoons over the years. And yeah, those areas that are in blue, that looking at 300% of what you would typically see since June 15th until now, uh, what you would see in a, in a monsoon season, we are literally halfway. So that's why I'm actually sharing this data with you. We are halfway with the monsoon that will continue through, say the middle of September timeframe into September starts to wind down. But yeah, some of these areas have picked up a lot of heavy rain and it comes fast and furious. And they've been looking at some dangerous flash flooding setups. And that is expected to continue. Look at some of these rainfall amounts here's here's phoenix you can see the blue right here in phoenix about two inches over the last uh since june 15th but just further to the north up in prescott again here's the graph on the right hand corner of the screen all those areas in green you start getting into more or less the orange and uh those shaded colors you're looking at 10 if not up to a foot of rain and so i do feel the uh, monsoon is going to be alive and prevalent going forward so now let's take a look at the other end of perspective because we do have an ongoing drought and this has been persistent complements of the La Nina that's actually been around since September 2020 and we're really going to dive into that La Nina but it's been complements with this subtropical jet down here in the Pacific that's been almost non-existent so that typically implies when you have all the drought conditions and the below average uh, precipitation anomalies you can see with the monsoon really digging putting a dent in some of this drought out here in the desert southwest and it's, it will slowly eat away at this 
going forward over the next probably month, month and a half. But yeah, where the where the drought has been really persistent and really intensifying is back here into Texas and parts of Oklahoma as well. And I don't really see that going away anytime soon. So going forward, let's take a look at some of these sea surface temperature anomalies right now. And you can definitely see out here into the into the uh, Pacific here, all those cooler waters. That is your La Nina, guys. And you got all this cooler waters out here with this cricket activity out here in the Atlantic. This is your main development region. And it's cooler. It's got a lot of Saharan dust. That's really, it's just kind of ripping these, ripping any cloud activity apart with all the Saharan dust just been alive and prevalent. And that's one of the reasons why these have these cooler waters out here into the uh into the atlantic here but we also have this persistent warm blob just south of alaska out here in portions of the north of pacific now if you kind of really delve into the data and look at some of the history going back all the way to 1950 <laughs> that's been pretty similar right we've got much cooler waters out here into the equatorial pacific we've got pretty cool main development region out here into the atlantic we've got this warm blob out here into the north pacific so we're getting into rare territory right i mean we're getting into this la nina that's been around since september the 2020 and you'd have to go back 22 22 years since we've had a la nina kind of this far this this lasting this long back in 1999 to 2001 so we'll really delve into those charts uh going forward so what's changing out there into the central pacific is actually not good and we've got this easterly burst out here in the central pacific that's actually upwelling some of these waters out here in the central Pacific. only it's only actually making them cooler and you can definitely see out here with the chart here all those cooler waters are really persistent and in fact the la nina is it, it kind of waned a little bit but now it's coming back and it's actually getting stronger and it's expected to get stronger actually through the fall and lasting going into the winter months which would make it a rare triple dip la nina is on the table so if you take a look at the chart and look at the consistency of this la nina with this combination of this uh easterly burst and the trade winds out there in the pacific ocean right now that is expected to continue over the next several weeks into the months and that is only going to be cooling those waters even further you can all already see the, the little bit of uptick we did have over the last six weeks is only reversed course with that easterly burst and i think that's going to continue and if that does continue that's going to be putting us in pretty much rare territory with that triple dip, dip la nina going through the fall and going through heading in towards the winter you know, this upcoming winter so if we take a look at the history right let's look at some of the really kind of nerd out now and look at some of the history of where these El Nino and La Nina type events, right? So you got El Nino here in this orange shaded area. You've got La Nina in this blue shaded area. So this is where we are now, right? So we've got uh, the prevalent La Nina happening since September 2020. This is expected to continue. The last time we've actually seen this activity was right here. It's been 22 years, guys, since we've had a La Nina this, this lasting this long so it happened in 99 2000 2001 and we came out of it right at the end of 2001 if you go back even further than that you'd have to go back to 1973 1974 1975 and we came out of it in 1976 and flipped to an el nino and if you go back even further than that you'd have to go back to that analog i showed you 1950 even 1949 that's actually not on this particular map but that was a pretty intense strong la nina year back in 49 and 50 where we had these back to back so we're on back to back la ninas right now and you can actually kind of match up some of the data that particularly happened say in 2000 uh back in you know between 73 and 75 time frame and then you can obviously have to go back all the way to 1949 to 1950 to look at some of these rare events that's happened and unfolded in this part of the country so typically 
La Nina really kind of implies these extreme type of events. You get these extreme droughts, you get these, or at least more persistent droughts, you get more persistent, like uh, flash flooding type events that we've actually seen. You get, you know, kind of big Arctic outbreaks that we've seen the last couple of years and some of these, some of these systems putting, you know, some of the colder weather in places like Texas and two years ago where they haven't seen it in years. You typically get that type of stuff in, in La Nina type setup. So, that's what's on the table really for the for the next couple of months with this uh, La Nina expected to continue and even the Climate Prediction Center is on board. So with all the combination of the data, here's their latest output back, back from July the 14th with this La Nina continuing. It has that system, a 60% chance going through July and September timeframe and then you have that burst and the easterly burst and the trade winds out there in the central pacific which only will amp up the la nina and actually get it even stronger and they put it a 66 percent chance the la nina continues through fall heading into the winter months and you can see the graph here with this la nina shaded in blue here with the pretty prevalent uh, going a little bit of a, a upward spike going into October and then going into November, December, and January timeframe. So that is the latest update from from the uh, the Climate Prediction Center. If you put all that data together, here's some interesting data that came out from the National Interagency of Fire Center out there in Boise, I, uh, Idaho, yesterday, and it's not good, guys. So if you take the combination of the drought that we're in right now and the, the the lack of rainfall and you put all that together with those you know combination the la nina continuing this is the updated fire map we'll take this map you know one month at a time so all these areas shaded in red here that is your above normal probabilities of wildfire dangers in texas much of oklahoma much of arkansas into the central plains with that persistent ridge is supposed to dominate in the midsection of the country missouri iowa getting into minnesota even a pocket up here into portions of wyoming here in parts of the dakotas and nebraska but also pretty prevalent in northern california and once you get off the coast in the in the pacific northwest and the interior regions the fire risk elevates as well going into portions of eastern, uh, you know, Oregon and eastern, you know, Oregon and then Washington as well. And then if you go into September, that just continues, right? So it's still prevalent over the southern plain, southern plains here, deep, deep south of Texas, much of California and some of these same areas. That's September, guys. You go into October, yeah, it wanes a little bit, right? So you typically see it's dry right now in the Pacific Northwest, right? So, but with the La Nina continuing, I do feel the active, like atmospheric type setups will come back once we hit October timeframe, and that will put a dent in the wildfire risk, especially for those areas, but be persistent and continuing for the midsection of the country and to Texas and Oklahoma and to Arkansas portions of Louisiana and the midsection of the country where the ridge is gonna be dominating. Then if you even take it in November, this is not good guys, this is not good. So even has the drought and possibly the above average wildfire risk continuing in good chunk of Texas, you know, going forward really for the next four months, but I had a request to include the active groundwater levels as well. And so here's where they stand. And so here's the graph on the bottom left hand corner of the screen where you see these reds. That's where it's basically essentially low where the ground is pr pretty much completely dry and out. And that's why it's been really persistent. So a lot of these areas that are have have seen the drought and are seeing the persistency of the La Nina has lower groundwater levels, right? And so there's only pockets of these blue shaded areas, parts of Nebraska, parts of obviously over here in the Ohio Valley and, and parts of here has that groundwater pretty saturated. So this is to give you an idea of where the groundwater levels across the country and then going forward, like I mentioned, these extreme weather events are continuing to happen. And a lot of it has really do with these La Nina type setups. You get these kind of a extreme weather patterns. And this is the third time, guy. This is definitely concerning. We It happened, you know, 
about a, a week and a half ago in St. near the St. Louis area where they almost picked up a foot of rain uh, overnight setups with these stalled frontal boundaries that happened again the other night in eastern Kentucky and then yet at last night again with that warm front backing up right it just tails you have a cold front seeking south and then once the warm front backs up it's like a conveyor belt of moisture that's relentless and it was a stationary front and it dropped a foot of rain it dropped a foot of rain into portions of Illinois. And this is definitely concerning with these type of setups continuing to show its face. And if you look at some of the radar depictions going into about nine o'clock, fortunately, fortunately, we're starting to see the activity subside a little bit and then start to weaken. But it was just a conveyor belt of moisture that came out of parts of Illinois that's fishtail down to the southeast and gave a relentless amount of precipitation right there in parts of Illinois. So it's definitely concerning that we're seeing such, you know, these extreme type of events happening so often, <laughs> right? I mean, it almost happens a lot lately. This is the third event. You're getting a foot of rain in a short amount of time. That's definitely concerning, you know, going forward. And we're not even like in the wet season. This is not fall, this is not summer, this is not, you know, spring, this is summer, <laughs> right? And so this is, you know, so yeah, definitely very concerning that we're seeing this activity going forward. But yeah, here's the overall setup for today. So we got the Storm Prediction Center with the active front here. Luckily, this is this activity is trying to wane, but we have new development forming just north of there, right? So we have another cold front, that's going to be kicking off another round of storms into portions of uh, Minnesota, back into portions of northern, uh, you know, north of uh, Minneapolis here, and then parts of uh, North Dakota as well. And this is a cold front, right? So that's where the active that this is where the active severe weather is for today. And then as we get through tomorrow, luckily we don't have a warm front to contend with. So typically when these types of setups with this cold front this is going to be continuing to push through it's not going to be backing up as a warm front so this these particular setups are typically not as prevalent producing serious flash flooding you still get some heavier pockets of rain but you don't get these training training conveyor belt of uh, moisture lining up one after another uh, with these uh, particular setups. So that's a good thing that I don't really see this actually continuing, at least for the next couple of days. So, but yeah, but going forward, here's your rainfall map, right? So, I mean, this is pretty much, you can definitely see where the ridge of high pressure is gonna be persistent over the next week in the midsection of the country. A lot of sinking air, definitely almost impossible to rain in that type of atmosphere. There's the monsoonal flow continuing off the desert Southwest. And then you have that easterly wave, right? You've got that easterly wave as the ridge of high pressure is able to sneak a little bit further to the north. It allows weakness in the ridge underneath. And we've got a lot of sea surface temperatures higher in the into the Gulf of Mexico. So it's pulling some of that tropical moisture down here and complementing that and bringing some of those heavier rains for further up to the deep south. And of course, we've got all that persistency with the you know continuation of these fronts that come through and then back up as a warm front and then we have another cold front coming through so we get just rounds and rounds of heavier rains and a lot of the same areas that have seen it as of late so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching thanks for hanging with me on this one if you do like content like this going forward yeah leave me leave me some comments i really like to nerd out on this type of stuff so this is my element right i mean so this is you know let me know if there's any content out there that you want to see for sure so i appreciate you guys uh, watching i uh, hit the subscribe button if you found value in this video and catch the next update where i protect you before and after storm